Okay, I think um, let's take the opportunity to get started. Before I get going, uh, just a few housekeeping details. Uh, this session is the second session. It's a repeat session of a session from earlier in the day. And the reason we did this is obviously, uh, depending on the time zone, we wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to attend uh, some of these sessions. Uh, so if you have listened to me already, you don't need to listen to me again. Uh, but um, I'm sure most of you um, are attending this session for the first time. It is also recorded in multiple languages. And so uh, we will be posting in a moment in the chat the different links uh, to the different language versions of this presentation. And this is a, a translated version of the presentation from the various languages spoken by the data site team. So please feel free to watch all of those. Uh, we also welcome any questions in, um, in any of your own languages. We'll try our best um, across the team to um, translate and, and answer any other questions that you may have. Um, further, I wanted to remind everyone just of the um, code of conduct. Uh, we'll also share that. And so obviously, we um, uh, want to have a open and respectful environment and so reminding everyone of the code of conduct and um, obviously there's a process in the code of conduct um, should you want to um, uh, let us know about anything or report anything and um, there is a process documented in that and um, so with that I will um, uh, go ahead uh, Paul if there's anything that I've missed if you can just cover that in the chat from the housekeeping point of view and I'll get um, underway um, with the presentation. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Bass. I'm the executive director at DataSite. I am based in Amsterdam, although currently uh, in uh, San Francisco, or just north of San Francisco for a conference, and really pleased to be talking to you today. A bit about DataSite, um, where we are now, um, some of the things we've done this year in terms of our strategy um, and the new strategic plan, some progress, and looking at um, how we, how we uh, measuring against these different strategic pillars, but also thinking a bit about the future. And we've got some interesting polling at the end um, to gather some of your feedback and, and thoughts. Obviously, this is a um, journey that we all on as a community. And so this session isn't um, the one and only session where we gather strategic input. Um, it, it's you know a comprehensive approach that we take across the different groups and different uh, community engagement events, but this is uh, another opportunity to gather feedback from, from all of you. Um, so with that, I will jump right in. Um, I always like to kick off our presentations, um, particularly when we're talking about our strategy and our vision for the future, a bit about our purpose. Um, as a community organization, it's really important that we remain grounded to our uh, core purpose and, and why we exist as a community. And as you all know, our vision at DataSide is connecting research, identifying knowledge. And what this means is bringing together the disparate pieces of the research lifecycle and connecting these to understand more about the scholarly record and bringing rigor to the scholarly record to address various downstream use cases from um, quality metadata and links between different research outputs and resources. We obviously are a community-led organization, and we often talk about that it's important that we convey to the ecosystem that we are a community and we are a community of communities and um, within data site, and that we co openly collaborate and uh, work with others in the ecosystem um, to build um, you, you know, the, the open infrastructure that we all talk about. Uh, participation is uh, available from uh, members and organizations and repositories all around the world. Uh, we have uh, members from over 50 countries, and we all have a common means uh, around the open infrastructure and services. It's also important that we acknowledge that it's our collective effort. We rely on each other for the success of the open infrastructure and for the success of the ecosystem. And so we only can do this by working together as a community. Within our community, we also have a core set of values. And this came out of the strategic visioning process last year and also 
some work that we did internally with some of the data site staff and everything that we do, we want to make sure that we underpin this with core values. And these are that we want to be uh, making sure that we develop and support reliable persistent identify services, that we transparent in everything that we do. So when we make decisions, when we um, have conversations about the future direction, that we do this in a very transparent and open manner. We uh, seek to be a trusted partner um, across the ecosystem, so as a community, but also importantly, as an open infrastructure, we wanna make sure that we are a trusted partner for our members and other community stakeholders around the services um, that we deliver. And we wanna make sure that we're inclusive and that we support a global community and value diverse perspectives. And we'll be sharing more in the coming minds a bit about global access and some of the thinking that we have around uh, truly being a global organization and being inclusive and valuing these diverse perspectives because we recognize that there's more work that we can do in this regard. Obviously, there's some key drivers and there's some things that we want to recognize when we look at um, the entire ecosystem. Uh, you know, we want to recognize that there is um, an imbalance sometimes when it comes to the expenditure and the resources that are available to some of our community stakeholders. And so, you know, we need to have this context when we think about how we develop services, you know, in terms of ease of use, reducing barriers um, to adoption and these type of things. And so we see this as a comprehensive approach. It's not just about, um, uh, I guess, uh, fees, um, but it, it really includes enabling and supporting the infrastructure that revolves around the services. And so um, taking a comprehensive approach is something that you'll see um, in the coming months and, and some news, a bit about some of our thinking that has been underway uh, in particular within the membership model advisory group and, and thinking about uh, global access in particular. We obviously together want to make sure that it's sustainable infrastructure and so this is really core and important that we want to make sure that the infrastructure is here for for the long term we talk about persistence and so we don't want to establish infrastructure that um, we as an entire community invest in many different ways and that's unreliable and so it's really important that everything that we do is built and and sustained in in, in a very um with a very long-term vision. Uh, also noting that infrastructure, and I use this image, can be confusing, can be complicated. And we wanna make sure that we setting up very clear uh, pathways to adoption and also the ability for community stakeholders to realize benefits of the open sustainable infrastructure. And so I often use the analogy of using say, uh, trains or road networks and talking about how you know we don't necessarily need to know every single detail about how the road was built um, and um, the, the sort of nuances, but we do need to know um, some of the basics. And so we need to know, okay, we drive on a particular side of the road, we drive at the speed. And so, um, and we also need to realize the benefit of, okay, if I use this, if I use the highway or, um, this it will get me from here to there um, in a particular time and these are the benefits that it brings me and so this is, can be the same for what we're doing at data site around open infrastructure in making sure that there's very um, a very clear use and, and a very clear tangible benefit to the community and so some work that we're doing around uh, I guess I'll storytelling and but also our, our positioning and how we position data side in the ecosystem to make sure that um, that's helpful for the community for, for all of you. We obviously are focused on uh, re really a lot of culture change in, in practices that have been um, embedded into communities and so this is a journey that we all on together. Um, fundamentally, we as open infrastructure are here to make it possible, make it easy. So we, we you know, looking to uh, build that infrastructure, ensure that the, the workflows and the um, user experience is, is really aligned with the community. 
Um, and then the community, as I mentioned, community of communities, the communities can make it normative and drive change. We can then start to make it rewarding and then make it required. Um, obviously, we can see in some cases where policy drives change and so it is made required, but it's really important that we have the base baseline of making it possible and making it easy. And then that in turn creates opportunity to make it rewarding and make it normative. And so I use one example of driving change in, in particular, if we consider data citation and looking at how we as the data site community um, around open infrastructure can make it possible and make it easy. But it's also important that we start to make a normative that we look to incentivize and create the incentive for um, authors to, to cite data and that we then, um, you know, coordinate with policymakers to make it required um, where, where, where needed. Um, our focus is obviously on open. And so this collective movement uh, has a promise to make research more efficient, reliable and responsive to societal challenges, but importantly, doing it openly um, and, and um, allowing for the benefit to be for the entire global community. Uh, we want to focus on bringing the disparate pieces of the research life cycle together. And this is really around bringing uh, to support supporting the reproducibility and bringing rigor to the scholarly record, as I mentioned earlier. And our practices, obviously, um, uh, when, when I talk a bit about a community of practice in a moment, um, you know, our, our practices and activities are around open access, availability, reproducibility, um, making it easier to really communicate the knowledge and advances in research and science um, across the different domains and disciplines. Um, we recognize that uh, the entirety of the research lifecycle is important. And so we are faced with the challenge that the current research articles provide only a fraction of the information required. And um, noting that the research article is a very, um, very succinct and good description of the research study. And so I don't want to discredit anything around a research article. It is a very valuable research output that we have as part of the scholarly record, but also recognizing as the data site community that we want to make sure that we're able to fully evaluate the entirety of a research study. And so focusing on the entire research life cycle is really important and bringing these disparate pieces together. Is, is really important. We uh, talk a lot about community and I've mentioned that multiple times today already and uh, our team as well as the community engagement steering group and some of the regional expert groups have focused on trying to articulate some of the stakeholders that are in, in our community and uh, this image here is an output of some of those discussions. Obviously, as I said, everything we do is iterative and we continue on a journey together. But this provides a good representation of bringing together the, the different stakeholders around collaborators, members, policymakers, integrators, and then also looking at, um, you know, some of the things that collaborators, you know, helping develop standards, members, setting up repositories to register, um, DOIs and metadata, policymakers driving policies, and integrators integrating into uh, workflows that support uh, researchers in, in the work that they're doing. It's all about together as a community and so how we do this. Um, one such example, and I've used this a couple times before, is uh, and I really love this, um, the, these uh, villages in Japan that are World Heritage Sites. Um, and I, I always avoid uh, pronouncing them because I always get it wrong. And so um, I'll leave it in text here. Um, but um, really interesting villages in that every year there's a renewed effort to maintain and, and keep the, the houses and everything um, structurally sound. Um, and everyone in the village has a specific role. And so certain groups will look after the roofs and certain groups will look after the roads, certain groups will fix windows. And this is a really good example of a community of practice where everyone has a, a unique um, role in the community of practice and collectively they work together and they maintain these beautiful villages um, that have the world's world heritage status. 
our community is uh, continuing to grow. This is a snapshot of our community. Uh, we've really seen a lot of growth in the number of repositories working with us. We have 2,700 repositories. This has been pretty um, rapid growth since so over, over the last three years, I would say. Um, very steady growth with the members that join the association and that then obviously support various consortium organizations and repositories. Uh, we are present in over 50 countries. Uh, the DOI registration um, continues to increase. We'll obviously see um, a fairly uh, significant uptick over the next year or so, particularly with partnerships with IGSN and other folks um, around um, registration. And we support around 1,200 organizations. It's also good to, I guess, uh, talk a bit about our community and the different governance groups that we have at DataCite. And uh, if we reference the community of practice, we wouldn't be able to do what we do at DataCite without the governance groups. And so we have the General Assembly, which is the ultimate governing body of DataCite and the association. This is the members, and this is really important that we are for the community, by the community, and the ultimate decisions are made by our members. But also then we have the executive board that focuses on strategic, uh, strategic activities around the association um, in accordance with the association statutes. Um, the board also has uh, terms of reference for the community engagement steering group, which also has sub expert groups. We also have the services and technology steering group, and we also have the metadata working group. And collectively, I think when I last had a look at the different number of positions across these groups, it was about 78 different people. And so these people also play a really important and significant role in helping us shape the future and actually move forwards as a community, representing the broader community, obviously. And so I also wanted to thank this group and um, all of you as the community, because it is our collective effort. And without all of our collective efforts, we wouldn't be where we are today. And I'm really proud about where we are as a community. Um, and, and the future that we have. I also wanted to, um, I guess, thank our amazing, wonderful team. Um, we had an opportunity earlier this year to meet in person for the first time in about two and a half years. So we um, spent some time in a forest in the Netherlands and it was really nice to um, one, just disconnect a bit and, and get to know each other better in person, which was really important for the team. We've had a lot of new team members joining um and uh, really nice to to connect with each other but also sit down and think openly a bit about you know how we can better serve the community and the different activities we have across the functional units within data sites and there were some fun things nice discussions um also some lego building from the engagement or sorry not engagement the engineering team um using this as an opportunity to talk a bit about the infrastructure and services and it was a really fun experience and just thank you to the team for all you do for for the community and and um, driving us forwards towards our mission um, I guess jumping into then a bit about our strategic uh, strategy, and uh, this is our multi-year strategy. This was the culmination of a about eight months work last year in a strategic consultation with you as the community in thinking about the, the direction and the strategic focus where, where we put emphasis in our activities. And this helps create the blueprint for the activities each year. So we have our core vision uh, we have our mission and then we have the key three strategic pillars underpinned we have our core values in enabling then the data side infrastructure and services that we provide so what i um, would like to do now is go through each of these strategic pillars i'll talk a bit about some of the activities that are underway in each of these pillars a bit of a status update of where we see these, and then also sharing a bit about some of the metrics that we've started to implement that help us track and measure against these strategic pillars to ensure that we are really executing against the, the I guess, uh, strategic focus that the community has set out. So jumping into pillar one, this was all about providing easier 
easy, efficient and responsive community services to support the needs of our community. And so within this, um, there were some activities related to tracking our effectiveness in, in delivering value. And this is this uh, a strategy to execution and making sure that we can coordinate across functional teams. So within data site setting up functional groups that are, have a very clear focus, consolidating various services and platforms. And so uh, making sure that we uh make the infrastructure easy and simple to use and focusing on links between in particular the metadata working group and data site members and uh here we, we've done a lot of work around making sure that the community has the opportunity to validate ideas and provide input that then goes to the metadata working group um, which is a community group that then um, in turn develops the schema and you would have seen recently the schema 4.5 draft was released for further comment before it's um, and it's uh, before it's finalized and released as the next release. In this strategic pillar we've made some good progress and particularly around evaluation and, and assessing our, our progress. Um, there is a bit more work um, that's needed and, and work underway around executing against some of these strategic priorities and indicators. Obviously, this is a multi-year strategy and so um, work to be continued in this area. Looking into some of the metrics, we, we did also have a discussion with our board recently around some of these metrics. And this was an initial I, I guess uh, baseline that we set out, but also we had a lot of discussion and so you will see some of these metrics changing over time. But initially we wanted to look at okay let's look at the status of the annual vision activities, uh, as you can see a lot, you know, a lot has been done, but also a lot in progress and some that are still planned not started and um, this is is expected a lot of activities are only scheduled to start in. in Q4 of, of the calendar year, uh, but also noting here that this doesn't necessarily provide a succinct um, overview because some activities, not all activities are equal and some are more complex and more, more work. So we're going to be also looking to, um, I think, revise this, this a bit more. We also have started to look at growth of repositories. As I mentioned, our repositories have continued to uh, grow and it's important that we track the trend that we we expect that there's economies of scale that the uh, um, total expenses per repository um, you know do do become more efficient um, obviously again we, we note that uh, there is is a base cost um, and and support to to each every each and every repository but you know through a global community, we all have the benefit of, um, I guess, realizing that that um, cost benefit analysis and in, in that we are growing and, and benefiting from economies of scale. In addition, we've started looking at our support queries, in particular, looking at support queries that are related to service issues. And so you'll see here that over the years, we've started to see a decrease, and this is good. And this means that Less of the queries um, via support um, channels are related to uh, related to bugs or service issues, and more related to you know working with the community. We do have more comprehensive uh, metrics that we look at around support, but this is just a snapshot and something that we look at. Within pillar two, this was um, a big pillar of activity. Uh, connecting scholarly resources through metadata to bring rigor to the scholarly record and tracking research influence. Um, within the year, we, we set out to uh, look at improving metadata quality and providing member insights, obviously the next schema version, which has just come out. Um, we uh, wanted to make sure that we can enhance the pit graph relational metadata and uh, provide dashboards and visualizations for repositories to look at some of this, uh, providing better statistics and data metrics, as well as the usage log processing service that we um, will soon be launching, which allows repositories to embed um, a snippet of code in your repository to track usage, uh, in particular views and downloads and feed that into the open infrastructure. 
uh, also supporting guidance and, and uh, adoption efforts around fair implementation and workflows and enhancing some of the discovery solutions so making sure that the, the metadata is discoverable and can be reused across the ecosystem. We making um, good progress in, in planning um, there is still quite a bit of work as you saw from the status updates um, in, in pillar one, one of the overall status updates across the pillars. Uh, we do have a lot of things planned. And so in particular, when there's services and things that are planned, we have um, done a lot of the product design work, but we haven't necessarily started um, some of the development work. So still quite a bit of work that needs to happen here, but um, we still um, have these planned and, and on the roadmap and are, are on track as, as, as planned. Uh, the metrics within this, we, we started to look at um, when we want to assess rigor of the scholarly record, and in particular looking at the connections, uh, we started looking at percentage of DOIs registered with related identifiers. So this is specifically in the related identifier field uh, with, I think, the, the 18 different related identifier types that we have, and then obviously the different relation types. But it was pleasing to see that we, we do have a good percentage of the DOIs registered with uh, related identifiers and this speaks to sort of building that graph obviously we want this to be higher um, there isn't necessarily a trend that we can see here but it's something that we want to look into and possibly looking into um, how this varies across different resource types as an example we also uh, looked at DOIs with persistent identifiers in the metadata and so this includes things such as uh, ORCID IDs or raw IDs and the contributor fields so anywhere that you can include a, a, a related identifier, uh, sorry, a persistent identifier in the metadata, and um, this was recognized. And also, again, um, a good percentage of, of the DOIs have, have relational information um, or related or persistent identifiers in it. We also looked at the resolutions, and so this was to, to look at, well, what is the reuse of, of the, um, the DOIs and the metadata across the data file? and if we look at a snapshot of different months in uh, July 2022, we had over 40 million uh, resolutions. Um, this was more than the DOIs that we had in the data file. And so really pleasing to, I guess, say that, you know, month, the, the monthly resolutions was more than the total DOIs. Obviously, a question is related to, well, how much of that is machines um, and bots? Um, we, we do know at the DOI level, and um, we do track this, but it's something that we want to look at um, at the data site level. We do know anecdotally that it, it's, um, it's probably, you know, I think around 25-30% of these resolutions is what we're seeing, but um, we, we need to do a bit more detail and, and look at that before I can give you an accurate number on that. But really pleasing to see that resolutions are going up and, and increasing. And you can see quite an interesting trend over the last four years. Um, within pillar three, this was about identifying and connecting all resource types held by the research organizations globally. And this speaks to, uh, I guess, what we were saying around the entirety of the research life cycle. And so there were efforts within this pillar this year around communicating our role across the community stakeholders. So lots of work with other collaborators, making sure that we provide trusted registration across services, uh, registration services across outputs and resources. And so I, IGSN IDs is one example, and you would have noted um, just this week, we, we announced the um, launch of IGSN um, ID registration services. This has been a lot of work and effort in uh, working through schema um, details and working with the IGSN um, partnership steering group um, in, in reaching this milestone. So a really important milestone and, and a lot of effort that's gone into that. And um, supporting the scaling of identified communities of practice, so working across communities, working with folks like the IGSN community and in joining the, the broader data site community and supporting the scaling of that community of practice, enhancing relational metadata and making sure that we provide the ability to demonstrate influence of research uh, for our members, for our repositories, and identifying gaps that we have in the community. Lots of work underway in this 
pillar, um, not necessarily everything is completed, um, but we have made some really good progress um, across these strategic initiatives um, and will continue to do so. Within this pillar, there's a lot more that we want to look at in terms of metrics. Um, we, we did have an initial snapshot of the, the largest used uh, resource types uh, across data sites. Uh, we can see 86% of the DOIs are used across these types. A couple of things to note about this metric, we see a large portion of DOIs registered using text. Uh, in schema 4.4, we released more granular uh, types, uh, resource types. And so this may tell us that um, not everyone has transitioned to using the new resource type. So if you're using resource type text, you may want to consider looking at some of the more specific resource types to, to provide that more granular clarity around the resource type that you have. One such example is preprint. And so you can see, and this is also with archive joining our community, uh, we, we have seen a significant increase in, in preprint registration, but also noting that we didn't have preprints as a uh, dedicated um, resource type prior to schema 4.4. And so that's also why you see this increasing. A lot of preprints have been registered under text. And uh, so this is something that uh, we're also working on. Um, and then, you know, physical object, uh, objects continues to be a, a high um, resource type or resource type that's used frequently and will be used more and more also with IGS and ID registration services. In this pillar, we're also going to expand some of the metrics to include assessing sentiment, uh, partner collaborations, uh, looking at uh, engagement through the community events and how we interact and, and uh, what the feedback is through those events. So thinking about bringing this all together and uh, through open infrastructure and services, if we consider what, what we do as a community and what the open infrastructure provides us, um, at, you know, at its base, we, we look at the, the core being the ability to register data site DOIs and metadata to improve the discoverability and reuse of research outputs and a number of services that are provided within this context. We then work um, across the groups, across the different functional teams at data site to make sure that we can uh, walk on this journey together in adopting and implementing best practice and evolving those over time. And then, you know, looking at making sure that we provide the ability to track the influence of research with tools and services. And so this is through various dashboards and analytics that we're developing, looking at things like harvesting services. So aggregators can make use of our metadata and ensure better discoverability of our members, members, um, POIs and metadata, and also serving downstream use cases through graph, the, the GraphQL API and relational metadata. So understanding what the relationship is between say a data set and an organization and a funder or uh, DMP ID and, and the different related samples and data sets and instruments um, as an example. So um, trying to also expand our work there. Um, finding and connecting research, which is a bit about what I was talking about. So in our interface data site commons, you'll see we expanded and launched repository search. So this can be also searched within data site commons and bringing together a number of open infrastructures in the ecosystem um, into one place and building this on top of the PID graph. Um, so looking at the number of nodes and connections, this continues to increase and allows us to understand more about the relationships between different entities within in the PID graph. Uh, important to maybe share that we, we view the, the growth and the expansion of the PID graph um, from, I guess, by using our data file. So you as our members, the, the DOIs and metadata that you've registered as the corp, as the sort of core corpus and building out from there, and then building relations across different identified types and, and across uh, resources in the ecosystem. Our practice is to collectively align uh, through our common mission and vision, uh, working together in this ecosystem and focusing on collective action to drive change through a community of communities approach. Uh, it's important that we work with communities and, and understand the context and, and the ecosystem within our sub-communities to help support that better. 
So our future looking forwards, uh, if we think about vision to execution, we spent a lot of time last year thinking about the community, working with you or developing our uh, next iteration of the multi-year strategic plan. And it's now a phase of execution. And so we, whilst we have various things underway in terms of strategic operational activities and actually executing and measuring against that, we also have a, uh, a moment to refine some of our things. And so thinking about our story and our positioning, how we position data site as a community within the ecosystem, how we think about you know, our branding and what, what we look about, how we think about engagement across the ecosystem with our members, with, with new members of our community, and also how we're building and developing enhanced open infrastructure services for the community is really important. So with that, I want to jump into a brief poll, um, a couple of questions. Um, you'll note that there's already um, some items in there, and that's from the previous session that we had with this. And I made the decision to actually keep the same poll because uh, this was um, it would allow us to collect it all in one place. So um, if somebody can, I think we'll post in the channel the menti poll, or you can scan the QR code here. Um, and I will take a moment to just quickly switch across to that. Also, feel free at any stage uh, to uh, post any questions in the Q&A. We will come back to them. We'll, we'll have a moment briefly after the polling uh, and can do that. Uh, Okay, so just checking that you can see my screen. Um, so um, the first one is, if you were to describe data site to a colleague in one sentence, what would you say? And so in the previous session, you know, some people were talking about, you know, membership organization, best practices, um, uh, linking scholarly outputs together, um, a lot around open infrastructure, um, DOIs is obviously a, a, a piece that's come up a lot. So if you if you were able to share this, uh, share what you would say in, in one sentence, what, what would you say? And yeah, there was also this note of, you know, cross research outputs, how, how we, um, you, you know, expand, expand the resources and, and ability to register across different items. Yeah, so really important here, yeah, yeah non-article, non-data set items, um, as you saw across those resource types that are used. Uh, Matt, just to quickly mention that there's a question in the Q&A um, for you to consider. Yeah, so the question is around, do we plan to work with Chris providers to embed a data metrics badge um, and making, you know, data sets available through, say, um, Pure, which is an Elsevier Chris system. Um, and so the, I guess the short answer is yes, this also came up in the previous session a bit about engagement within our service provider program and uh, being able to uh, work with them in implementing things for our community. So um, it is something that we've noted and we'll, we'll come, come to. Um, so I, I think a lot of the service providers have been around repositories, but there has been increasing, you know, talk around uh, engaging also more with uh, CRIS providers as well. So and something that we, we would look at. Um, you know, some people talking here also about put service provider, Okay, I think we'll move um, on to the next uh, next slides. Um, you're welcome to, um, well, I guess, uh, I think I can do a countdown here. Um, we'll do 30 seconds and then we'll move on to the next, next. Uh... 
And this, uh, to give it some context, is some of this is working around the, the positioning and our storytelling. So taking this into some of that thinking that we're doing, we actually have a consultant working with us on this and, and focusing on um, how, we, how we position and talk about uh, data site. Okay, then um, if I go to the next slide. Well, the next question. Um, so the next question is, if you could change one thing about our positioning, so how we talk about data site, what would it be? And so um, different comments here, um, some things around enrichment or metadata, um, um, surfacing the widest range of persistent identifiers wherever they appear. Um, Um, some things, you know, the overlap. So that's something that, you know, somebody called out is, you know, how do we differentiate? How do we make sure that that's clear? It's confusing across the RAs. And so that's also recognized. Um, DOIs for funding and, yeah, so thinking about, you know, particularly grant IDs and, and this fits into that pillar three around across um, outputs and resources and, and um, that are helped by institutions. We also know a lot of our members that are not necessarily traditional research funders themselves, but also have um, are, are very involved in or do have funding that they provide for research to support research and helping support those workflows as well. Um, and yeah, there's a comment around not just data sets, as you saw in the resource types, you know, this is obviously a, a um, big piece, but it's, um, yeah, not just, not just uh, data sets, we across resource types and uh, out uh, resources and, and outputs. Um, Okay, I think I will jump to the next one and then so uh, this one is around your impression on, on rate of change. Obviously, we recognize that um, there's uh, uh, a, um, it's a multi-year plan and so we expect that uh, we haven't achieved everything, but how would you assess the, the progress that has been made across these three pillars? So if you give an indication of, well, you, from your impression, you think there's good progress being made here or less progress, we recognize that there's still a lot of work to be done and, and that's natural with the multi-year strategic plan. Um, but uh, just getting, a, 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 I guess, a bit of um, understanding and sentiment in, in the... Uh, group here today of where we are. And so I'll also put um, a timer um, so we make sure that we also have an opportunity to have a few, few questions before closing. And Matt, while we're waiting, uh, there's also another question on the Q&A box. Okay. Um, yeah, so a comment around uh, clarifying the scope, the uniqueness of services uh, data site provides would be ideal. Um, yeah, so, you, you know, uh, cost can, can be a factor uh, against competitors, um, you know, and, and, and the pricing. So, you know, noting that um, as an example, well, with Crossref, um, data site is less than, than Crossref, but it depends on the volume. And so we do have a different model in that um, we don't have a linear model as, as an example. So it's not linear per unit. Um, so we recognize that at, at, at economies of scale, as you register more, that there's not necessarily a linear cost associated to that. And so when we did the membership model, we um, focused on understanding the resource costs and working on a cost recovery basis. So making sure that we are sustainable um, at its core, um, but definitely a good comment um, around that. And, uh, you know, clarifying the message, I, I think is really important. And also, you know, I think a lot of what came up in the earlier session is that we want to make sure that we are articulating that we are a community working together and it's not just a, I, I guess, service. 
that being said, we also know that as, as members, you need to justify the cost and expenditure internally, um, and that's really important. So definitely something that we'll take on board. Okay, and then the final poll um, we will move to is, um, oh, what happened? Um, oh, there. Uh, the final uh, question is to uh, look at prioritization for uh, strategic activities in 2023. So if you could have a brief look at how you would prioritize this. Um, and I'll also put a brief timer um, on this. Um, we'll put um, one minute. Um, and so um, a lot of uh, emphasis placed um, on the accelerated metadata completeness, um, consolidating use cases and tracking identified research outputs and resources throughout the scholarly life cycle, scholarly, uh, uh, scholarly research life cycle. Um, this was also something that came up a lot is ingesting uh, metadata from, from additional sources. And so this is that relational metadata. So if you're registering uh, a DOI with Datasite, we're able to detect from additional sources, oh, this has been cited by, or this has been used, um, and, and the relationships between that. So providing a lot of um, better, better, I guess, uh, insight into to the registrations that you have. Um, proactive steps has also been a big one around being the trusted uh, PID community uh, service partner for research organizations in, in across these research outputs and resources. Great. So I think that's, um, you know, given us a bit of insight, as I mentioned, this isn't the only session and um, it's also good to to just get a bit of a sense um, from everyone we do have a few moments um, and we do we do then plan a, a brief break before the next session and in, in the member meeting there are further sessions if you'd like to attend for the day um, i think next up if i'm correct correct me if i'm wrong gabby but i think the next session is um, a roadmap session talking about our services um, you will have to just link into that specific session um, if needed. I'll just quickly check the um, uh, chat. Um, there was a, a comment around um, the uh, NSF not accepting data set DOIs for, for non-data sets. I'll, I'll have a look into that. And um, we do talk to the NSF folks. And so, so I, I hadn't heard that before. Um, obviously our schema is um, set up at, across resource types and has for, for many years um, from our launch and been used um, across different resource types. And um, as, as I showed in, in the, um, the, the, uh, uh, metrics around resource types that have been used. And yeah, we'll share, we'll share all of this, the recordings, as well as the results of the mentee polls and slides, as Paul mentioned, um, for everyone following the session. Um, the next session uh, link is in the chat, if you'd like to attend that. Um, I guess uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to just uh, thank everyone. Um, for attending today. Um, it's really, um, uh, I'm really proud to be able to, to work as the executive director at DataSite and work with you all as a community. Um, I, I really genuinely um, continue to uh, value our, our collective efforts and thank you all for, for your uh, input throughout. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. Um, look forward to working with you all in, in uh, the next year, over the next year, and we have an exciting path ahead. I think we've had um, a lot of success as a community and, and a lot more to come in, in next year and the years to follow. So thank you all for that. Um, I think there was one final chat around the mentee. We've just shared that. You're welcome. We'll leave it open. You're welcome to complete the mentee um, following this session as well. 
I think that's it, Paul. Um, do you want to, should we end the session now? Um, so you can set up for the next session. Sure. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gabby. Thank you. Bye.